Hey guys, today we're going through UTM tracking and the campaign report in Google Analytics. All right, so now we're looking at the campaign tab under acquisition in Google Analytics and the campaign tab will only work if you use something called UTM tags to track your campaigns. And UTM tags are sometimes added automatically depending upon where you are coming from. For example, MailChimp, you can click a little button to add UTM tags to your links and uh, with Drip as well and some other mailing systems. However, for most uh, times and even for those systems, it's better to actually create your UTM tags yourself. So instead of just digging into this uh, report, which doesn't really show you that much, it will only show you the groupings of your campaigns that you're running right now. I much rather go through how you actually create your UTM tags and they're called UTM tags because uh, they are. Uh, you can Google the uh, just Google UTM tag tag definition, and you can find a whole discussion about why and how they came about to be called that. It sounds fancy, isn't that fancy? There are essentially four different UTM tags that you can use. Uh, on your links and they are there to separate your different campaigns from each other and so they are uh, the of course the url to the page so if i want to have bought a campaign that you know sends traffic to this page i want to track where that traffic is coming from let's say i started a campaign on facebook with three different variations of ads i started six variations of display uh, ads and uh, like 30 keywords that was targeting keywords that was going to send traffic to this page let's say I, I did all of that at once now i want to attribute the different channels and the different messages the different ads with the different values you know so i want to track every single uh, message so what i do then is i go to something called the campaign url builder i take the url from this page here click copy and i paste it in here so then it's done then i go to campaign source and in campaign source you should always write here you should always write the source and the type so for example if you posted a link in a facebook page then you should write facebook page then facebook group Quora answer, Facebook answer, you know, so you can keep track of what type of source this actually is that you have gotten this traffic from, because otherwise it might say Facebook and then it's like, but you know, doesn't tell you that much about it. I like to put that in the uh, campaign source. So let's say I wanted it to be from a Facebook page or Facebook dark post or Facebook. Uh, lead ad or whatever you you have like the, the actual source of this then in the second one what i do is in medium here i try to put uh, i try to put uh, what kind of uh, source uh, and what kind of format it was so there i again go if let's say this was a face uh, facebook link i write that out so it becomes very evident what what it actually what it actually was i might even go as far as facebook uh, 280 uh, times 280 uh, link like that just to be able to keep track of uh, what it actually what 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 i actually did with the different or what kind of format I actually used for the different uh, mediums so because every single every single type of ad every single type of message is different and in the medium you know a link on facebook is very different than a video on facebook and it's very different from a ad format on facebook so i want to you know put as much information into it as possible and do that in a structured way the next thing is name and in name i never forget to put the date so today's date is the 24th of february so what i would do was i would go 2019 02 24 and then i give it whatever name it had had blah 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 name because and the reason for this is we rarely remember 
the name, the exact name of the campaign that we've put up, but we always remember the date when we went live because we can usually track that. And so in order to be able to simply or to easily pick these, you know, up for segmentation and things like that, when you're doing your data studio dashboards, I always like to put the date in there, uh, you know, just out of comfort because it helps me with the sorting later. And so that's how I do that. Campaign term here is then added with the keyword or is added with the keyword that you set on it. You can do all the keyword tracking manually. You really don't have to if you have implemented ads thing here. Uh, so I generally don't do that. But then it comes to add content. And what you do here is you write out the messaging for that specific ad format or banner or whatever it is that you did. So, so super duper good Trump. Uh, and uh, it will be that which will be the message that you had in your banner or in your ad variation uh, on on display for the user. And then you, of course, have different ones here. So you use different tracking, uh, but for every single ad format that you've put out, and then you can actually see which one performed the best instead of having to guess that so that you don't repeat your mistakes and continue creating ads and paying for ads and visibility that doesn't bring back any value. So that's what you do with campaign tracking. And it doesn't even, it doesn't only have to be the, like the, the, the traffic that you bought, but it can also be the organic traffic that would, when you use your social media or your own blog or wherever you put a link that might be able to convert where people might be clicking that link. I would add some UTM tags just to make sure that I understand where the source of this traffic was triggered to come along and play with me. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this tab. Uh, I don't have that many campaigns to dig into, but as you can see here, you have the campaign, you have the source, you have the medium, and then you have uh, add content here. So if you want to go down further down into what is what, you can do that in this report. You know, you can track and see what message and what source and all of those things corresponding to what you put into your UTM tags to begin with. Here's the link that you should then copy. It's long and ugly. And if you want to hide it a little bit from users, what you do then is you go to bit.ly and you can shorten that link into a smaller, nicer looking uh, link. You just hit create here, paste it in, create, and then copy like that. And then you have a much nicer little link that you can use that doesn't look as scary. It actually is less scary most of the times for users to uh, use the long link than to click an unknown bit bitly link like this but if you want to make it nice and sexy you can create your own url shortener that looks very fancy you can use that instead okay now i am done have a good day